we should be recording now. So, hello everyone uh, and happy new year. Uh, this is a COSI interim meeting. This is an official ITF meeting. As such, the note well applies. So, if you haven't read it already, please read it carefully. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask uh, me or Matthew for clarifications. Uh, this is our agenda for today. Um, we will first have administrative uh, part, then some updates for drafts and uh, charter, and uh, some CBORs and the discussion of CBOR certificates draft. Is there any bashing of this agenda? I will take this as a no. Okay, so a note well was presented. The minutes uh, will be taken at this link. I also pasted it in the uh, Jabber. I can also paste it in the chat just to make sure that people have it. Uh, presence will be taken in the minutes and the meeting is recorded. Um, yes. Are there any volunteers to help with uh, the minutes or Jabber? Well, uh, if you have the chance, please join at the uh, uh, minutes and help us at least have the correct action items in the minutes. Uh, otherwise, we will be looking at that as well. So, moving on to our document status, uh, we have the cash aux. Uh, 8152 bis aux uh, already in RFCQ with uh, missing reference. Uh, that is the same as it was during the previous meeting. Uh, for the 8152 bis struct, I believe Matthew has made uh, maybe all of the changes or at least most of them and I believe they are discussing with Ben if there is anything else that needs to be changed. I imagine we'll have a new version quite soon and uh, hopefully uh, we'll progress with that document very soon. And then for the uh, uh, Next one, we are scheduled for the uh, X509. We are scheduled for the telechat uh, tomorrow. Um, I don't know if there is any new thing for me to say here about that. I believe uh, the, uh, all the members of the IESG uh, have no objections. Now for the draft. Um, so, yes, that's maybe the most uh, important part here. Uh, the only thing that maybe we should um, briefly discuss is uh, there are examples already provided by Jonathan. Uh, maybe it will be good to reference those in the uh, draft. I imagine this should be an editorial change given that examples are uh, not normative text, uh, they are informative and 
Yes, I imagine this uh, should be like editorial change. Uh, if anyone has objections to that, please uh, speak up. Um, I, I, this is Lawrence Lundblade. Um, a little confused uh, on Cozy X509. There's still open issues in GitHub, and I don't know what tell the chat it tomorrow we're talking about yet. Uh, yes. So the open issues in GitHub. Um, so my understanding is that uh, we need to improve the wording and provide a little bit of explanations why, for example, the uh, X5U parameter uh, needs to be a, in a trust uh, relationship. Uh, do you think that those issues are like more than would require more than editorial changes? Uh, maybe. Okay. Um, so this is Ben Kaduk. Uh, Lawrence, thank you for mentioning the GitHub issues. I will be sure to look those over before I um, update my ballot position for the IESG telechat tomorrow. It's sort of our biweekly call where we, well, it's not the only place where we officially approve documents, but it's sort of the uh, periodic sync up point that gives us a a time when we're expected to look at the set of documents that are being reviewed that week. Um, oh, yeah, I see. Okay, I, ESG. I, I see. I, I missed that part. Yeah. Okay. No, no worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is actually the second time that Cozy X509 has been on the agenda for the ISG. So uh, most of us have looked at it quite extensively already, and it should be fairly straightforward. But uh, I will definitely check the GitHub issues. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically think um, Cozy is basically trying to, x 5 is trying to solve the same problem that uh, uh, JWS is trying to solve. So the big question is, why is any of this different from JWS? And if 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 you, you either believe it's the same problem, uh, or you either believe it's not the same problem, or there is... Uh, in which case, maybe it should be the same. And if it's if it's not the same, it, either you, you should make it the same or file errata against G GWS. Uh, I have no uh, no counter argument to that uh, that reasoning. The counter argument, this is Michael. The counter argument is that JWS is something that we aspire to move to, but requires an ecosystem um, revolution. Um, and the compressed X509 in theory um, is uh, can be uh, done with uh, in a more of a fax effect kind of thing um, um, incrementally. But this uh, is not not about compressed X509. This is about the headers and Cozy. Oh, I'm sorry. My my bad. <laughs> yeah, I know. I yeah. get mixed up too. Yeah. Um. I think that sir, so I think it's it's clarifying something that JWS. Maybe you're right. Maybe it should really be erratas. Maybe it should update JWS. I mean, we we did add X5 bag, which J, JWS doesn't have. So that is one variant, um, but um, variation. But I, I'm not even sure if I think X5 bag is all that important. But anyways, you, you got the idea. So thanks. Yeah, my take on this would be that JWS was around when, when this work was done. Uh, so we actually had a chance um, to learn from that. And uh, yeah, Jim Jim actually tried to learn from that. And that's why Cozy X509 is, is different in some detail. Um, so maybe it's a good idea to document these learnings a little bit better so it's easier to understand why 
X509, Cozy X509 is different from what uh, JWS has. Uh, Karsten, do you think that such documentation would need to live in this document specifically, or could it be a sort of separate follow-up document? Well, I think that document would be most worthwhile if it actually had first experience from using Cozy X509 as well. Um, so I, I actually think it, it would be good to have that as a separate uh, document, but that, that of course makes understanding the document at the moment and, and why why it's uh, uh, a little bit different from the JWS one um, is harder than it could be. Sorry, I'm trying to take notes at the same time, but I basically agree. I don't have any further comment. Okay. So, okay, then uh, I will wait for also Ben to see the issues in GitHub and yeah, basically depending on that, uh, see if I just need to improve a little bit the explanations uh, like having some editorial changes, so it's really more uh, important to have some substantial changes here. Okay, that sounds uh, as a good way forward. Thank you. And uh, yes, the last item, it's the counter sign uh, document. Uh, there was the uh, working group last call. I didn't see any objections to that. And I believe during the uh, last meeting, there was uh, some support for it uh, being ready uh, from the working group's point of view. Uh, so uh, unless there are any objections now, uh, I think we can say that uh, when the working group approves this. Hi, this is Jonathan Hamill. Um, so I, I raised an issue on the list about the uh, status of the early code point allocation. Yes. Uh, yes, so... Um, we were supposed to look at that with Matthew. Uh, we still haven't done that, but uh, we should be doing it very soon, I hope. And uh, my understanding is that this is an issue just uh, in terms of the examples. And uh, as such, and uh, like worst cases that we will need to fix the examples or do you see any other uh, problems that could arise? No, that's correct. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think those were the documents that we needed to discuss now. And then for the rechartering, uh, I don't know if you have already seen, but uh, uh, Matthew has sent an email uh, for uh, the new charter uh, asking everyone to review it and provide feedback. Uh, I think we have discussed it quite a few times, but uh, if there are any points that you would like to discuss now, uh, please, uh, please speak. I'll take that as a no. Okay, and then 
we can move on to CBAR certificates and John. Uh, thank you. Um, so I will, this will be two presentations. I will discuss the changes and planned updates for the next version. And then Jara will discuss issues. Uh, so next slide. And we submitted the version 06 uh, yesterday. Yeah, next. So changes from 05 to 06, a lot of these are actually things that were presented at the last interim as planned updates, and then we have done that. So we have mentioned more certificate profiles. Uh, we have uh, added text in the discussion that certificate chain sizes is also a problem in non-IoT, for example, EAP, where access point cut the connection, and in quick, where large certificate chain lead to an extra round trips. Uh, then we have, uh, we have implemented tools to download certificates from TLS servers and Seaboard compress this. And uh, we have done that for uh, tens of TLS servers. It works fine. Uh, based on that, we see that there are some strange extensions and there are uh, definitely quite a lot of attributes. So we have introduced the possibility to encode attributes as a OID and a raw their string to be able to compress everything out there. Then also noted that basically all certificates on the web, web have a single attribute uh, per relative uh, distinguished name. Uh, I have not seen any certificate on the web that is not formatted like that. And we have then optimized based on that. I don't know if there's any certificates in other areas where that actually have several attributes per RDM, but uh, the standard definitely allows that. Uh, then we saw some street address and postal code in some web certificates. This is also included in the CAB baseline, so they have uh, been added to the IANA table. Uh, they have changed and simplified the algorithm registry, so it now in code. It's an int for the whole algorithm identifier, including parameters, instead of only being an int associated with the OID. Then uh, we notice that the signature value encoding for ECDSA did not work. Uh, there was a mathematical formula previously, but uh, we noticed that that actually implied that you knew the issuer um, public key, which you typically don't if you process a single certificate. But uh, we found out that could actually simplify this and make it better. So now it, the rule is instead instead of padding to a fixed length, uh, you just pad to so both the integers have the same length, uh, which is actually simpler. Um, then we changed from sedlib to broadly for the uh, comparison table. Um, Broadly provides a little bit better and faster uh, compression. We wanted to compare with the best. Um, we have significantly restructured the IANA table to make, make them easier to understand and better. So now they have the full OID and their encode of the what they encode and so on. And better also some more information, better structure and more information. Um, then there was a request to use these the example certificates for ad hoc, and that required a private subject private key that's now added. The, the ASNN one was hopelessly outdated. We have removed that. We think it's probably too much work to, um, uh, to keep that updated, but if somebody uh, wants, please comment. And then some editorial changes like Positive to unsign that Karsten pointed out. 
Um, any comments? Otherwise, next slide. Next. So, these are the current plans for 07. Uh, we want to have an example IEEE certificate, which Michael has promised to provide uh, in January. Then we, there was a request for some more deployment guidance for IoT. Um, uh, basically, some guidance on what different choices lead to which sizes and so on. Uh, then we are planning to use the tool we have to download a lot of TLS certificates and or certificate change uh, change and try to compress them to see that the algorithm work. Um, most known collection of uh, URLs, the most popular is Alexa, but that uh, Alexa Million, I guess it's called, but that's now uh, it's not free anymore. You have to pay to get that. But we found out that there are at least three publicly available lists: Cisco, MS, Million, and then Tanko list, which is Cranko, maybe, which is a collection of these two and Alexa. Um, by some researchers. Uh, then there are some specification left for the extensions. Um, plan to, for some of the extensions, we definitely support uh, like the, the full uh, extension. Uh, for some other, we might support a subset based on uh, how complex the extension is and what we see is actually used on the web. Uh, at least that's the plan. Uh, and that is planned to be done in 07. Uh, then we plan to do a comparison with uh, Brotly for, uh, for TLS chain. So we plan to take some example uh, chains, uh, for example, from tools.idf and uh, then compare uh, the DER chain, the CBOR chain, DER plus Brotley and CBOR plus, plus Brotley. And uh, yeah, that we also hope to have maybe in 07 or uh, uh, yeah. Any comments that are next? Uh, then some we, while working, starting to look at chains, we see that there is, of course, quite a lot of duplicated data when you start with chains. Uh, mainly the issuer field is duplication of a subject field in typically the next certificate, or if it's a self-issued certificate, in the same um, certificate. And very similar with the key identifiers. The authority key identifier is just a duplicate of a subject key identifier in another certificate. And for self-issued certificates, which seem to be actually quite common that TLS servers send, then you might also have a, a, another authority cert issuer in the authority key identifier. So basically the subject field is duplicated three times in the same certificate. Um, uh, just a note that this could, um, this could definitely be compressed and Karsten wrote right that that Seaboard pack might help with. Uh, that's probably a good idea. I have not thought about that. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, um, so, so when you're talking about compression here across certificates, yes, right? and and to my reading, we haven't done anything about that. And I no, would agree with we you, have not. I would agree with you that Seabor Pack might be the right answer to do that um, uh, for that. Um, but then yeah. I think we also need to ask the question: um, How long the chains? What are these chains? Where are they used? How long are they? Um, and I, 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 
they could be quite there. Um, and Carson just had a comment in the chat, which I agree with him. We could define a, a, a profile of it, but I, I don't know. We haven't really made a lot of progress on that lately, have we? No, uh, the, the, the problem really is that it, it's uh, extremely hard to define a CBO pact without having a good set of use cases in mind. And uh, given that this is a use case that we actually reasonably understand and that we actually can get corpuses from, that we can run experiments uh, on, uh, it seems to me that, that the the basic approach uh, of uh, CWAPEC to have a, a base document that defines mechanisms and then, then specific documents that define how to use these mechanisms in a specific environment, uh, th that would actually work very well. How does CBOR pack relate to the static context header compression? Well, actually, the, the static context header compression uh, could go ahead and define uh, entries in the tables that, that CBOR pack uh, uses. So that, that's another way to, to develop uh, CBOR pack to integrate the the table building or the static dictionary building um, with uh, environments that, that can make use of that. Um, Carson, also there's the issue if 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 we are we're primarily dealing with compression of chains of certificates, then I would actually want to say um, what happens if we just take um, we just take some simple CBOR representation of the certificates without doing a lot of, uh, of the optimization we're doing right now um, and applied CBOR pack to it, right? It might actually be simpler than some of the things we're doing. Um, but but if in the degenerate case of one certificate, that gains us nothing. Right. Well, actually, I'm not sure about that, but um, probably not much. Well, CBOR pack, CBOR pack will do nothing because it's it's it, most of the items occur only once. They the commonalities across. Certain well, that that depends a lot on whether your CA and your your subject are actually from the same organization. So, de de depending on on how you use these certificates, uh, it may give you a little bit. There's also the possibility that CBOR pack might uh, also be applicable to the wider thing, the whole COSI structure or something like that, that you're, that you may be carrying certificates in would do better. Yeah. So we could define a static dictionary specifically for this. So that would be part of the profile. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's look at that on the next slide i have some example sizes i did not look if you change to the next slide uh, so here i did not think about seaboard pack but they has noted that these fields could just be replaced with the integer pointing to uh, like uh, zero pointing to the subject field in this third and the one pointing to the subject field in the next cert in the collection. And then you get quite substantial savings for the for the example certificate you save, you reduce from 1,242 to 1,075. I assume Seabor Pack would do almost as much. You have some little bit more overhead then, but similar. As I said, the savings for self-issued certificates are even bigger. Uh, benefits of doing something like this is that you provide large savings. Negative is that you provide extra, if, even both this and zero, extra complexity and the, the compression of the, if you use it for compression, it becomes two pass. So you need to pass over everything twice. Um, and for for the TL when used in TLS, where you already have broadly 
compression, basically this this would achieve basically s similar things. I don't know how the numbers would look for that, but I assume Brotley would find these duplicated things and, and compress them uh, relatively optimal. Yeah. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. I don't know if some more comments based on that slide. So just a question for the last slide and uh, the uh, figure that you provide and there when using Brotley or uh, what are they exactly for? Uh, th these are are when you replace the issuer field with an integer. So in this place, one okay. meaning, yeah, the idea here was that the one indicates that the issuer field is the same as the subject field in the next certificate, one step away. And the same here for the authority key identifier. It's the same as the subject key identifier in the next certificate. I see. Thank you. But then you have then you have basically two levels of you would need to uncompress it then to to be able to verify the signature. Yeah. So uh, th this is uh, Lawrence Lundblade. I was question of uh, if you have any comments about certificate size versus code size. I mean, it seems like uh, there's a number of things that are being proposed here that reduce the certificate size, but it w that will increase code size. Mm. Um, and I, I, I'm mostly asking just like if there's, you know, been thinking about the use cases and, you know, is code size an issue? Yeah, I don't know. My, I tried to implement this. I would, my code size did not increase very much, but I had to restructure the code and I think it, it got more Com I had to rewrite it to be able to implement this and do a two pass, and it, it probably I used a lot more memory. Um, I mean, it was but my my question was in general. I mean, yeah. the whole approach, right? Because I mean, there's a, a lot of these things are little little tweaks here and there, and each one of them adds some code. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we need to. I think that's something we should consider. I think the, the specification is not set in stone. It would be very good to hear feedback that this only gives one byte optimization, but it uses a lot of code. I think we should skip this. Yeah. Um, but I think it also depends on what assumption you have. If you, your assumption is that you have CBOR packed, then maybe your code size is not increasing very right. much yeah 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 okay so do you have any ideas how we can uh try to evaluate the different uh, assumptions and the different criteria that we should be trying to optimize. Um, I don't know. I, one step would be to depends on what we do. I think you could get numbers for. Um, I could. We will. We will look at uh, change. Uh, to the next version, so I can at least provide example change and um, example sizes and compare with uh, with what you get when you get broadly compression and so on. Then me or someone else need to look at uh, the CBOR uh, pack. Uh, but it seems like there is interest, so we should look more into so they've get changed seems to be the indication at least. Okay. 
so if there are no other comments, we can go on to the next presentation. Um, uh, this is Lawrence uh, again. Um, I writ, wrote an email about the use of uh, Seaworth sequence. Um, you know that this is a, a Seaworth sequence; that it's not a, um, a, a individual data item, and the implications that has for incorporation into other Seaworth protocols. Um, I, I don't didn't see any responses to that, but I thought it was something that probably should be thought through a little bit more. Okay, I am. I have missed that email. Um, can I can I can resend it. Um, Lawrence, was this the discussion we had uh, last last uh, meeting? Last uh, meeting. Um, I mean, there were a number of, of pros and cons listed. I, I tried. So to the, the, the there, there's there's. Yeah, there's two issues with uh, byte string wrapping. One was um, what you hash, and that's we had some previous discussion about that. This yeah, is a yeah. separate issue. This is about whether the overall uh, compressed uh, certificate is a Seaworth sequence like it is now, or it turns into a a data item. Um, you know, and if it stands as a CBOR sequence, you can't just drop a CBOR sequence into another CBOR protocol. You have to, because it just it doesn't work. It will confuse the decoders. So you have to wrap it in a uh, in a byte string. Um, so, so that's the second issue: is is this should this be a data item or should it remain a CBOR sequence? And the you know the implications for uh, you know. Putting it in another um, in, in another Seaboard uh, protocol. So I, I, that's I think it's a separate issue from the uh, the byte string wrapping for hashing. Okay. So. Yeah, put it in in another protocol. Then you could also wrap it with the uh, array. I assume. Yeah, yeah. You can wrap it. We ha you, you either wrap it with an array or you wrap it in a in a byte string. And like with the Cozy X509 headers. Uh, and like X5 or C5, C5 T, C5 chain, um, there is byte string wrapping there, so that that all works. But um, anyway, we don't have to go into it now. I just wanted to to uh, see if anybody read the email, and I'll I'll, I'll resend it. Please post an issue. Oh yeah, an issue. Okay, that's fine. We come to the issues now. I think so. I'll show okay. You there. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay, any other comments here? I'll take that as a no and moving on to the next presentation. Okay, uh, Joran Selander, I'm going to talk about some of the issues. Next slide, please. So we are compiling the open issues in in this public repo, uh, if you haven't seen it. And that's uh, mainly, uh, in terms of the number of issues, it's mainly um, issues regarding things we, we think are necessary to do or um, the comments that we we track. But there are also, I mean, this is open for, for anyone to to comment and uh, add issues. So please, please use that. And hopefully we'll get adopted at some point and then we'll move this to, to the COSI working group uh, issue tracker. So today uh, I'd like to speak about five of, of these issues, which are selected here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, here's the first, and that's um, this is a request uh, to specify CBOR encoding of certificate signing request. So this was uh, this particular issue was 
posted by Stefan Ristisov, who may be on the call now. Uh, yes, I see him here. So yes, hello. great, great that you're here, Stefan. You, I'll ask you in a minute to to uh, motivate this, but um, just to say that this is we have got this request previously uh, also, and, and there is already. Um, a first sketch for how to do this. Uh, but first, Stefan, would you like to just provide, motivate why you think this is useful and uh, what's your use case? So we um, worked on ad hoc implementation and we wanted to use uh, ad hoc with uh, CBOR encoded certificates. And for that reason, we need uh, such certificates from somewhere and um, I read the documentation, I read the draft and uh, I noticed that, uh, that that's not specified. Um, so I mean, um, certificate signing requests are not specified. And I think this is uh, important in the IoT environment, especially uh, for devices which uh, may use ad hoc um, to um, generate certificate signing requests. And yeah, so that was the motivation for uh, posting my issue. Okay, thanks. Um, so I, um, I mean, I agree with Stefan. I think this is a, a good motivation. Um, this has been actually requested for people to, that are planning to use TLS as well. Uh, so it's, uh, I think the, the idea is that uh, you, you would have sort of the same type of encoding of, of, of the different certificate related uh, items. But anyway, there, there is a first sketch. Uh, and the, the question here in the issue uh, is basically, is this something that we should uh, try to align with or uh, even take over uh, in COSI. So this first sketch is in a, a draft on enrollment uh, uh, using, uh, using EST with OSCORE. And this is an appendix. And we note that this, this format uh, is, is, the first, uh, is the first sketch really of, of uh, what, so there are some examples here of things that we would like to to have in 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 an CSR like subject public key algorithm or encoding of of uh, attributes in, in uh, specifying extension requests, and that so that things that we already define for CBOR certificates. So it, it it makes sense to align them. Uh, and um, yeah, so so the question is: is is this something that we think that the uh, we should work on in COSI, or should we just hope that ACE will adopt this and that they will uh, travel somehow in parallel? Uh, the, the, we have the fortune uh, that one of the authors of the CBOR certificate draft is actually the contributor of this uh, this particular example here. So we could we are free to take this example and move it out of that draft and put it into this draft or a separate COSI draft. Any opinions about this? I think it's good to to actually evolve these in parallel. So I think we should keep a very close eye on this, and um, probably the the easiest way to keep a close eye on it would be to do it in the same document. Um, if it turns out to be difficult to do that, we can always extract it into a separate document later. Thanks, Karsten. Other opinions. I'll just note we had at least one opinion in the chat. Uh, I don't know that we need to read them all out. Right. Uh, Michael says, thank you. Same document. Thank you. Okay. Uh, unless there okay. So, uh, would that affect the charter? In this case, oh, good point, Divido. Yeah, let let let's come back to the charter after we gone through the issues. There are other issues as well coming up. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so here's another uh, related issue. Um, so currently the CSR is specified in terms of signature keys, but we, uh, for IoT applications, we'd like to be able to use static Diffie-Hellman keys to authenticate with. And then there's a request to specify the encoding of CSR for, for static DH keys. And one solution to that is provided by uh, by this RFC 6955, Diffie Hellman proof of possession algorithms by uh, by Jim Shard and uh, Hema Prapul Chandra, I think. And the basic idea is uh, we replace the signature in the CSR with a Mac uh, generated by uh, with, with a Mac computer with a key. Uh, which is computed with the shared secret using the different Hellman keys of the requesting endpoint and the CA. And it's described in section six of this RFC. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and there are, there are advantages with using um, this. Uh, there will be a, the CSR will be smaller, um, which is, uh, I mean, the Mac. Instead of the signature is, is a good good reason why to use static Diffie-Hellman keys. Um, but it also requires the requester to have access to the static Diffie-Hellman key of the CA. And then there are different variants of, of acquiring the acquiring the CA Diffie-Hellman key. Uh, this could be part of the enrollment functionality. So, for example, in EST, uh, you could use uh, various of the ESD fun functions to, to acquire trust anchors. Um, so, well, same question here. Um, do you think that we should specify also this uh, in, in the same draft or should we, does this motivate that we should actually put all the CSR related stuff in a separate draft? opinions I see in the chat uh, there is one opinion that using Mac for uh, CSR may also help for post quantum algorithms right yes good point Okay, I don't hear any objection or any preference for um, doing this in a separate draft. So uh, the working assumption here is that we, yes, we, we try to do this. Uh, we make it in the same, same draft. Next slide, please. Just a second, I have uh, one question regarding this issue. Yes, um, go ahead. And namely, um, so, this means that the CA also authenticates with static Diffie-Hellman key, right? Um, is it possible to have uh, something like certificate, which is which contains uh, um, static Diffie-Hellman key, but it is signed with, I mean, by assume algorithm? Yes, that's possible. And uh... how can then the proof of position uh, be shown in that case. Yeah, so so in I'm not, not just speaking in principle, and I don't know exactly how to signal this or to how to uh, set it up. But but it, this this the enrollment request requires one trust anchor for, to be able in this case to be able to generate the shared secret and commute and, and the Mac and so on. But the certificate coming back, the enrolled certificate could be signed with, uh, with another key, with the signature key of the CA. So there might be multiple trust anchors. Okay, I understand. So basically two trust anchors uh, must be there. Yeah, but exactly how this, 
all plays together? I'm not sure at the moment, so I need to read up on that. Okay. Other comments? Just for information, we have eight more minutes. Uh, I don't know how much more remains from your presentation. But... Um, not so much. I think I, I, if it's only my presentation, then we'll make it. Yes, it's only the presentation, and if we want to discuss uh, if it will affect the chart. That's right. Okay, so let me speed up the, the issues so we have time for the chart. Next slide, please. Yes, so now, now we have opened the lid on uh, CBOR encoding things related to certificates. And then comes a number of other questions, at least two other questions. Should we look at CBOR encoding of CRLs? Which is fairly straightforward. Should we look at CBOR encoding of OCSP responses? Opinions? Well, OCSP, definitely. CRLs, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Who needs that? Yeah, I'm in a similar boat. We should definitely have some way to convey revocation information, uh, but we can take some time to think about which ones actually make sense in this format. Good, thank you. Great feedback. Next slide. Um, I don't think we need to spend much time, time on this, but since the, this was an issue and uh, now looking very stintly at Karsten, <laughs> what, what should be the file extension um, for, for these, these objects, the Seabor certificate and the Seabor encoded variants here? Maybe we should, if, if you have a good opinion, maybe you could just fill in the, um, the issue, make a comment on the issue on this. Do you think it's something worth bringing up here? Or anyone else, of course. Who find this interesting? So I was recently um, trying to do a. Um, I'm encoding something in Seabor somewhat internally that sometimes makes it to disk, and I wouldn't mind having a. Uh, and I think, and I previously had a magic number at the beginning of the file when it was bespoke encoded, um, and so I'm actually thinking about how to do this in a standard way in Seabor. Um, and so actually that certificate it would be useful to it would actually be worth thinking about whether we should the file format actually maybe should it be a seabor sequence with the second sequence being the certificate and the first one just being a magic number that could be thrown away when you transfer it across the wire or something like that but i think that's actually kind of something reasonable because um if it is stored on disk um uh, knowing which what thing you need to it, it you it goes with and other stuff like that is actually kind of really useful in the end. Great. Uh, so um, for so those who are knowledgeable in this and, and see the um, and know the practical implications, please please provide some answer here, or or maybe we should even ping the Seabor working group for thinking about this unless they're doing it already. Um, so uh, just to uh, wrap up. There is a final uh, point. Final slide is the last slide. Just a reminder, uh, Michael, you kindly volunteered to provide an, an example. Um, looking forward to that. Thanks. And now for the charter. Uh, and so th there was an interest in in looking at CBOR encodings of things related to certificates, namely. CSRs, something related to certificates. Uh, was that it? CSRs and something related to certificates. Yes. Revocation. So that, that, uh, yes, exactly. Um, sorry, revocation. Something related to revocation. So maybe something like that should be added to the charter if we think that is the right way to go. Should, should I start drafting something and and send to the working group for review? Or do we, does anyone want to provide some input? 
So for me, this will be definitely very interesting. Good. Okay, so uh, it seems to me that there are people who consider this interesting. And so far there is no one opposing. So yes, uh, Goran, please go ahead and draft uh, some text and of course people will review it and then we'll see uh, if it works. Okay, fine. Karsten also posted a comment on the uh, on the charter, which uh, I commented on, and it's in the chat. And I could add uh, that at the same time when I'm making a proposal for update of the charter. Yes, please. Okay, then, then we're done with this presentation. Okay, so then any other business for the two minutes that we have still? If not, uh, thank you everyone for your participation and uh, we'll have a next meeting in around one month. So I'll see you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.